Please join us in our opening song, Gracious Spirit, Heed Our Pleading. Gracious Spirit, heed our pleading, fashion us all anew. It's your leading that we're needing, help us to follow you. Come, come, come Holy Spirit. American Lutheran Church and welcome to virtual worship once again on this Sunday on the day of Pentecost. My name is Pastor Kristen McCarthy and I am the intern pastor at American Lutheran Church. We are so happy to have you all with us and um, we're especially thankful to have visitors here today with us. A couple of announcements to start us off. First is that we have a new online giving system which is going live for the first time today. And so if you're watching this on YouTube, down in the description, there's going to be a link where you can follow and do online giving. And so again, I said this last week, but you can go ahead and set up giving for every week if you'd like to, or every month, it can be reoccurring. It's a really great system and um, we're super excited about it. Another announcement that we have is we are still looking for readers and musicians for worship. So please, please, please let me um, or Carrie know if you would like to do either of those things. Please join me in our opening prayer. Oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join us in our opening song, Gracious Spirit, Heed Our Pleading. Gracious Spirit, heed our pleading, fashion us all anew. It's your leading that we're needed. Spirit come. 
first reading comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they were filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the days, in the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3 through 13. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, all these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or great Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Our gospel reading for this morning comes from John, the 20th chapter. The risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. One, two, three, go! Good morning and welcome to our children's message with the Gizgans. We've got Audrey and Adeline. We have our guest Raylin today and I'm Carrie, of course. Um, so today is Pentecost. Um, we are observing Pentecost today and usually when we think about Pentecost, we think about flames or at least that's what instantly pops into my head when I think about Pentecost. We're learning about the Holy Spirit. So this is this really cool coloring page that we have. This is, I printed off one already colored so you could see it. But when I think of Pentecost, this is what I envision. So we've got all these coloring pages. Your parents will be able to print them off and you guys can each color of color them and then maybe share them with the church so we can all see your guys' beautiful artwork that you do. So on Pentecost, we are hearing about the Holy Spirit, which I've kind of been talking about the last couple weeks. Now the Holy Spirit came just as Jesus said it would before he ascended. Now there were all these people together on Pentecost, including the disciples. When they heard this sound that sounded like a really strong wind come through, and tongues of fire appeared above everybody. Did you imagine that, guys? Wouldn't that be kind of crazy to see? Yeah. So when that happened, all of the people, even though there was all these people around, they spoke different languages. Like, you guys hear people speaking different languages, right? Like, I can speak, uh, go up to 10 in Spanish. You see, there's Spanish, and Audrey's learning French. There are all kinds of languages. Now, all these people were speaking different languages, and all of a sudden, everybody could understand everyone. Like, they were speaking the same language, even though they weren't. Isn't that amazing? It was pretty shocking. Everyone was shocked. Now, what happened was that the Holy Spirit had come to them, just like Jesus said they would, or said it would. So now, you know, it's a lot of years after that day of Pentecost that we, we learn about in the Bible. But the Holy Spirit is still with us each and every day. The Holy Spirit comes to each and every person. And we all have gifts spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit activates in us. God, the Holy Spirit, gave these gifts to everyone. Now, God doesn't skip over one person just because they're, they're different. God doesn't look at a person's hair color or their eye color or their skin color and think that they're dirt different and don't deserve a gift. And these gifts are all different as well. And they're all different kinds of things. So maybe one person's gift is being a super really great artist, or maybe they're a really good singer. Maybe someone's gift is being able to make people smile, or being really brave to stand up for something that they believe in. Now, no gift is better than another gift. All of these gifts are precious, and each gift was given specifically for you from our loving God. Now each and every person is a valued and is loved beyond measure, member of the family of God. And each and every one of us is important. Now it's summertime. Who's excited that it's summertime? Two hands for me. I love summertime. It's my favorite. So it's a time for bonfire and s'mores. Who likes s'mores? Me. They're so good. I'm the fire. You're the, <laughs> the fire. Vampire. Ooh. So what I want you guys to do is every single time that you're having a bonfire or campfire this summer, I want you to think about the Holy Spirit. Because how the Holy Spirit appeared on that Pentecost as the 
tongues of fire. I want you to think about the Holy Spirit every time you see a fire or a bonfire and think about the gifts that God gave you. God handpicked those wonderful, amazing, special person that you are. And remember that the Holy Spirit is always with you, wrapping you in the warmth of God's unconditional love for you. All right, so you guys pray with me. You guys can repeat after me, okay? Say, Dear God, Dear God, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. And you made each every and every one of us. And you made each and every one of us. Wonderful too. Wonderful too. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. To be with us always. To be with us always. Help us to listen to the Holy Spirit. Help us to listen to the Holy Spirit. So that we may learn. So that we may learn. How to use our spiritual gifts. How to use our spiritual gifts. For the good of everyone. For the good of everyone. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to each of you this week from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I can't lie to you um, when I say that this, this week's sermon and reading seem pretty hard to me in the face of all that has gone on this week, in the face of racism happening again in our world and in our country that we live in. In our gospel reading, we hear about Jesus saying, peace be with you, and breathing over the disciples so that they may receive the Holy Spirit. But what happens when our siblings of color, when people in our world, in our own country, can't breathe? What happens when Jesus says, breathe in this spirit, and we hear of George Floyd saying, I can't breathe. This past week, many of you probably heard about the act of terrible racism that occurred when George Floyd was murdered. And it's a really difficult subject to talk about. As a white person, it's uncomfortable because I have to acknowledge my own white privilege in my complicity in all of it. But I acknowledge this and I try to use my privilege for good. Earlier this week, I was texting with a member, Lisa Lang, who um, you all know, she has adopted um, several of her kids and she has a few black boys. And she posted on Facebook this week, she said, I dread the day that I have to have this talk with Deontay and Kaden. I've already told all of my kids that when a police officer pulls you over, put your hands on the dash and don't move them without asking permission. You don't want them to think you are reaching for something. I told them what the article was about and how it isn't fair that they are judged just based on the color of their skin and that they need to be very careful about how they are perceived, that their lives could be at risk. So Lisa, one, one of the members of these beautiful black boys believes that this is an issue that we cannot ignore and that we cannot stand by and allow to occur. Again, on social media this week, um, a good friend of ours that lives in Northern Michigan posted about her son Solomon. Now she and her husband are white, but they have adopted a couple of children as well. And this is her 11 year old son, Solomon. Amanda, this, this is the mother's name, Amanda shared this story on Facebook and I asked her if it would be all right if I shared that and if it would be okay with Solomon. And uh, she told me that she was all right with it. And Solomon really loves that we are using this story because he wants to be part of the change that needs to happen in this world. So she wrote, 
A couple months ago, our 11-year-old son tossed his field guides in his backpack, donned his walking stick and hunting vest, and set out down our rural road in search of adventure. A half hour later, he came sprinting back in tears. He had been only feet past our property line, exploring the cattails when a neighbor drove up behind him. The man asked him what he was doing. Without allowing opportunity for a response, the man told him he was calling the police and proceeded to take out his phone. No, hey kid, what's your name? No, hello young man, what you up to? No courtesy of talking with parents about suspicious behavior. You see, our son is black. In her accessible yet challenging book, So You Want to Talk About Race, Ijeoma Oluo defines racism as a prejudice against someone based on race when those prejudices are reinforced by systems of power. We have two 11-year-old boys. One is black, one is white. Our white son has never, will never, face the same hurdles as his brother. People sometimes jump to unfair conclusions about our black son and the systems of power reinforce their prejudice. This was just one small example of what people of color face every day. Powerful man in white diesel truck makes assumption about black boy, calls powerful police. Boy runs home in tears wondering what he's done wrong, terrified that police are after him. Experiences etched into boy's memory, heaped upon all the others. Our black son is not perfect. He makes 11 year old boy choices. Our society ought to allow him that, just as they allow that of our 11 year old white son. If and when he crosses a line, and he will, he should be dealt with appropriately without fear of unwarranted repercussions. George Floyd deserved better too, as did the countless others who have lost their lives to our racist systems of power. I am not asking for pity for our son or for us as parents. Sometimes hearing a personal story makes remote situations hit home. Injustice needs to be brought into the light to begin to be rectified. I have never been a fighter but I've entered this fight. I don't even know exactly what that means and I'm sure I'll screw up, but I'm willing to be in the ring. George Floyd deserves those of us in positions of power to demand and do better. Brown and black people everywhere deserve better. There is no going back. So American Lutheran Church, I want to first thank you all for wrestling through this with me, for wrestling through this together as one community in the body of Christ. And I wanna talk about why this matters and why it's important. We hear in one of our other readings today that we are all baptized into the same spirit, all baptized into the same members of the body of Christ. And when there is one member of the body of Christ that is hurting or that is down or that is pre having prejudice against that member, all of the other members are also hurting. And so when this racism continues to happen, our entire body of Christ is hurting. Our God is hurting and that's why this matters to us. We feel this pain too as members of the body of Christ. And so we're called to do justice while we walk humbly with God. And so I am directly asking each of you, what can we as a body of Christ, as part of the body of Christ, what can we do to acknowledge the racism that goes on and to help do justice? What are you each willing to do? We could have a summer book study. We could all choose the book together. We could go through anti-racism training together, but we have to be in this together and we each have to be willing to learn from one another, to discuss with one another, to allow Christ to enter in, to allow the Holy Spirit to breathe over us. 
yes, a couple days ago, this same mother of this 11 year old boy, Solomon, the same mom followed up on her post. She said, tonight something completely unexpected transpired. We were working on a project in the front yard, stepping away from the birthday party inside when a vehicle turned into our driveway. It was the man who confronted our son some months ago. I had never met him. He identified himself and proceeded to apologize multiple times. He had spoken with another neighbor who had helped him acknowledge his overreaction. He realized that he had gone too far and stated that he has been feeling damn awful for making our son so scared. He wanted to make sure that I shared his apology with our son, and that our son should know he has the freedom to roam the woods. The remorse was palpable. I asked him whether he had threatened to call the police and he admitted that yes, he had. I didn't ask him about whether his reaction was racially motivated. If given another opportunity, I don't know if I would. I still firmly believe that it was. Here's where the still figuring it out and will probably make a lot of mistakes philosophy plays out. But today felt like an opportunity to accept an apology, to build a bridge, to live grace. The timing of our encounter feels more than serendipitous. Perhaps the news about George Floyd was a catalyst. Perhaps all of the prayers, all of the support, all of the positive energy that have been thrown at this situation have nudged us along, even an inch closer to the reality we desire. There is still much work to do. My prayer is that all of our righteous anger continues to turn things around for the better. Let us speak, act, vote, spend, march, pray, fight on behalf of those who cannot. The well-being of our siblings depends on it. And I just think that that is an amazing story and an amazing example of what we can be doing and about what we can be thinking about. And so now what? Now what shall we say? Now what shall we do? We are called to do this work, American Lutheran Church. No matter how hard and uncomfortable it may be sometimes. We are called to build these bridges. We are called to apologize. We are called to recognize our own privileges and our own complicity. Like our, like our presiding bishop of the ELCA said, until a white majority feels so deeply in our soul, the pain of black and brown people is our own pain. It will continue to be dangerous to be black or brown in America. So let's act now, American Lutheran. Let's do the work of the gospel in the world in the name of Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Amen. Please join us in our hymn of the day, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind.
Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day a daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. And now may you receive this blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, be with you all. Please go and share this peace today. Share it everywhere you can. Amen. Please join us in our sending song, Spirit of Gentleness. 